Today, we're gonna to be talking how to code reading behavior with running records. I'm Dr. Julie Webb. I created this video series just for you through litcentric.com, my website, and this is obviously my YouTube channel, so I'm really glad you're here. In this video series, I'm going to show you nine different codes that are really commonly used in running records. They're really the most important ones you need to know to get you up and running right away. And these codes are going to help you get information about what your readers are doing, how they're processing text, and also things that they're not doing because that's important information that we need to know. In this video, we're actually going to take a look at sounding out something students do all the time, especially our struggling readers. But before we get to that, I want you to click the subscribe button below and click that little bell, give it a little ding up in the corner of your screen, and that's gonna make sure you get notified of when new videos come to Litcentric's YouTube channel. All right, let's take a look at our practice sentence on how students sound out words. Now, I don't know about you, but my beginning readers sound out words all the time, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. And uh, in this case, we're going to just show a student who attempts to sound out this word play. Now, this isn't just a beginning reader problem. This can be an issue that happens a lot, even with older students. And when I was a reading specialist, I worked with pre-kindergartners all the way through sixth grade. And I had many, many students who were struggling readers. And my struggling readers consistently sounded things out and did not do it very effectively. So this is a behavior I think is really common. I've seen it all the time. I bet you have too. So let's learn how to code it so we can better understand the attempts that the student's making because that helps us understand maybe what we need to try instead. So our student here is going to read this sentence, we like to play. And when they get to the word play, they're going to use their sounds to actually uh, decode that word. So uh, the student's going to read accurately here. We like to, but they pause at the word play and we want to show that they actually decoded this word. They sounded it out. We want to document just exactly how they did it. So again, we draw a line to separate what the student did from what the text is or the teacher behavior here. And we're going to document exactly how the student sounded it out. So if they said p -l a that lets us know that they've got a few sounds under their belt and even a phoneme, and we want to make sure it's documented. So they say, P and then we mark a little hyphen, and then we put the O sound and another hyphen, and then we add that A-Y that they said. So if we put a hyphen in between these different sounds, that lets us know that the student decoded it by sounding it out. They didn't say the word play, they said P -o -a. Now, if a student decodes like this and slows down and sounds it out and then says the word afterwards, we can actually add another code. So here if the student says, we like to p -l -a play, we actually want to give them a little tick mark to show that, yes, they slowed down and sounded it out, but then they got the word accurate at the end. So we want to make sure that we add that in there because sometimes our students will decode and they won't say the word afterwards. They'll just say, we like to p -l a and then they keep reading. So it's important for us to know if they're actually saying the word at the end or not. Now, it's important for us to be able to code all this information, but the problem is it's a lot of information. Even if we're doing our codes well and it's kind of fluent for us and we feel really good about it, we have to make sure we're processing all this information and recording it in a way that makes sense so that not only can I report this data to you know, all the other stakeholders that need to know it, but also I make sure I can process all of it. And I've designed a special lesson in my course, Running Record Bootcamp. It's an online course you can get access today. And in the course, I have special lessons in there on exactly how I organize all this information, not just for one student, but even my class as a whole. So I can look for patterns and trends in the data and I can see kind of what moves to make next. Uh, this information, it's important you have it at your fingertips in a really simple way so that you can process it quickly and you don't spend all of your time looking at numbers, but you actually understand what those numbers mean and how to translate all that information into meaningful reading goals that will actually help your students to thrive. So in the comments below, I have a link to Running Record Bootcamp. Uh, click on that link and it will take you to the course page that has all the different lessons in there. There's videos and downloads in there for you to access. You can access them right now. There's many for free. And there's one in there that I wanna make sure that you get. And it's called Litcentric Common Codes Cheat Sheet. 
I love a good cheat sheet. And this sheet covers the nine codes that we're talking about in this video series, but also gives you information about what that really means for the readers who are you know, kind of doing these behaviors. We need to know what they mean. And that cheat sheet can help kind of jumpstart you when you're learning these codes for the first time, or you're not quite sure maybe what some of these things are telling you. Maybe you understand a little bit about what it's telling you, but I bet there's information in that cheat sheet that can help you look at your reader in a little bit different way. So click that link below in the comments, Running Record Bootcamp, take a look at the course in there and download your copy of the Common Codes Cheat Sheet. Do all that right now and have a great day at school.